we sliced the chicken in half long ways and layered all the chicken in with the moo glue on top, made sure it was all covered and coated, every little corner mattered, and then we used the tin foil to just close it all up. We're making this taste exactly like Raising Cane's, at least that's the goal. So we gotta make Raising Cane's sauce. Super easy to make. All it is is mayonnaise, ketchup, Worcestershire sauce, garlic powder, black powder, and lemon juice. Stir it all up, and then that sauce is ready. To prepare our batter, we need to have our chicken marinated. I combine buttermilk, eggs, and garlic powder into a huge pan, and then the little bird's going swimming. I guess she's lots of birds together. In another sheet pan, I combined flour, breadcrumbs, salt, and baking powder, the famous cane. We're gonna batter it. It's been marinating, and because it's so big, we're going for a double batter. This big tender is being moved right into the marinade again and back into the flour coating. We've had a huge deep fryer set up, and we're going down for the first fry. We dropped it in, we're like, it has to get cooked all the way. It should be fine, right? Uh, we pulled it out, and it was looking kind of dark on top. We took the temperature, and we found out that it was definitely raw in the center still. Is this thing gonna look good? Is this thing too massive? What's up guys, the P-Man's back, hashtag how you peeing. This is not a versus, it's a rescue mission. So clearly, big is not always better. Maybe I'm not the best example, but hear me out. So I was thinking, how do I save this recipe in a way that y'all could actually make this at home? So I respectfully grabbed three breasts, trimmed off the tail end, because it was super thin, and butterflied them all the way down the side. Then I was able to open them up to then realize, wow, this already looks like a giant chicken tender. I think y'all see where I'm going with this. So with a little poundy McPounsicles, I got some tender spreadage, and guess what? When you tenderize a breast, it becomes tender. Chicken tender. And since Julia's massive Flintstone failure wasn't fully cooked. I was able to learn from her mistakes and therefore create a custom sous vide to par cook my chicken. I'm taking my this. I'm taking it. Oh, what are you doing? I'm taking it. Dude, it's fragile. <laughs> Take it. Simple process. Pop chicken in a bag. Vacuum seal with Amazon associate link and place in 140 degree water for at least 45 minutes to kill the salmonella. While those are sous veding, I had time to kill, so might as well make the entire Raising Cane's menu giant. Didn't think of that. Y'all just made the sauce. What about the other stuff? No need to clean, wash, or peel. Do as the JPers do and build antibodies by unsafe food handling. Because our fries are going to be giant, we need to par cook these also or they'll be raw. So punch holes with a fork, microwave for six minutes, take them out, and just cut, 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 cut. And then I dunked them into an ice bath to let them rest in the meantime. For the Texas toast, I bought a big loaf. I cut it down and tried to smash it out and realized it didn't really get any bigger. So at that moment in time, it occurred to me, I can cut the slices in a way to resemble a giant Texas toast slice. It's genius. It's also odds and crafts time with JP. To make your giant Texas toast, cut four slices of bread and trim off the crust on respective adjacent sides. Sprinkle some shredded cheddar cheese on a silicone mat to be used as the glue to combine our four slices together. Now simply brush on some melted butter, and season with garlic salt, garlic powder, and parsley flakes. It came small, so you cut it into a big slice. Yeah. It's smart. I mean, not smart. Then I baked for a few minutes and broiled to get that top nice and toasted. And there you have it, folks. Giant Texas toast with a delicious bouquet of cheese on the back end. Well played, myself, from the past. So the bread mag chicken, I was thinking, why reinvent the wheel? <laughs> Julia already did this. Your efforts don't go unnoticed. Thank you, Julia. So, la da 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 buttermilk, flour, buttermilk, flour. And look at that, look at that breading. I think we're ready to deep fry. Before I fried the chicken, I gave my giant crinkle cuts their first steep fry. Came out golden, delicious. And then proceeded with my chicken. The oil was at the right temp, my technique was on fire, and after four minutes, these chicken tenders looked glorious. And my goodness, this looked so accurate that from a certain angle, it actually looked normal sized. Until you zoom out and see itty bitty Julia holding this giant plate of food. 
So I left the room, I come back, and I'm kind of checking out what JP's been doing, and I'm like, wow, this is actually looking really good. Wow. But the truth is, is that I didn't give up yet. I wasn't 100% ready to say that my giant tender was done -zo. I did the obvious thing. I took the breading off and re-breaded it and deep fried it again. It just has to look pretty on the outside. We can achieve that, right? Is too big a thing? I don't think so. We gave it a little tussle in there and I'm like, it's not attached. It's not attached to the spatula. This is a good sign. A few minutes later, we very carefully pull this chicken out of the deep fryer. I bring it over to my giant bowl of raisin cane sauce and I go right in for a dip. And yeah, very saucy, almost too much sauce. Kind of got up in the hair bit, nose a little bit. Am I the winner? Is JP the winner? Are we all winners? There's no poll on this video, you have to comment. We not only showed you a giant chicken tender using science, we were also able to create an entire Raisin Kings meal oversized and easy enough for you to do at home. You don't have to vote for the P-Man. The P-Man votes for you.